Meanwhile, Manchester United are still looking for a new coach. Uh, reports have suggested that Ten Hag is the favourite, 3-1 to one on, to make the move from the Eredivisie to the Premier League. Uh, Pochettino still in the mix at 5-1. to one. But some interesting quotes attributed to Louis van Gaal, the former Manchester United coach, about the possibility of Ten Hag taking over. He should choose a football club, not a commercial club. Oh, of course, hello. a man uh, who knows it uh, <laughs> firsthand, what it's like to be in charge at uh, Manchester United. Uh, Gab, do these quotes have any relevance to what we're going to see happen in the summer? I mean, well, first of all, I'd love to know, you know, obviously given Van Gaal's history with Ajax, does, does he actually speak to Eric Ten Hag? Does Ten Hag listen to him? I'm, I'm assuming Ten Hag reads the newspapers, uh, is familiar with the Glazer Out campaign, uh, knows that uh, what's happened at the club in the last 10 years, uh, and he's aware of all this, just as he's aware, perhaps, that there's, you know, there's been a change at the top, Richard Arnold taking over for, for Ed Woodward, and all these things come into it. So just rubbishing Manchester United because you, Louis van Gaal, had a bad experience there, and you didn't like Ed Woodward and, and the owners, and you didn't like the way you were sacked, whatever, that's fine. But, you know, there's a new guy, on, there's a new guy in charge at the top. Um, there's new people in position of, of, of power. Well, not new people because they've been there forever, but, but Darren Fletcher and John Murta now, you know, for the past year or so, they've, they've been promoted into, uh, into this more senior role. And do your research. You know, it's as simple as that. Are United very commercial? Yes, they are. Do the Glazers maybe care more about making money than they do about winning? Probably, but they still spend a ton of money. Most of it foolishly, but they do spend a ton of money. <laughs> So from that perspective, if you're Eric Ten Hag, if that's what you want, go in with your eyes open and don't worry about Van Gaal muttering away in the corner. <laughs> Speaking of muttering away, let's get to Robbo. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, who, would you... who would you like to ask me, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> who would you choose? Uh, up until this season, I'd have said Pochettino was a, a fantastic coach. I thought he was brilliant at, at Spurs. They played good football. He turned them around from being a very average side. He made them winners up to a point. Uh, and I thought he would be the manager. But he's experienced at PSG, where he hasn't been able to get the best out of the players. He hasn't done particularly well in the Champions League. Uh, and they've struggled on occasions in their own league. So I'd have to go with Ten Hag because he seems to be a manager that gets the best out of players. Uh, he's done well at Ajax. Uh, they, he knows that they sell players. So he's had to keep rebuilding the side. And I think he's got a bit of a rebuilding job to do at Manchester United. What he's got to make sure is that when they buy players, he has a, a say in buying the players and they're good players and he gets a better team spirit because there's lots of things that are wrong with Manchester United over the last few years. And it's not just being, being because they've been co a commercial club. It's because they've made wrong signings. The managers haven't been quite good enough. They haven't got the best out of the players. And there seems to be a, a, a strange spirit at the club. He's got to change all those things when he goes there. And of course, they've got to sign what? going to happen with Cristiano Ronaldo. Interesting stuff with him talking about his future. Remember, he's got one year left at United at the end of the season after signing that two-year deal at the start of this campaign. He's been talking about his future and saying, I enjoy football and I still feel useful both at the club and the national team. I will decide when I want. If I want to play more games, I will. If I don't feel like it, I won't play more. It's that last sentence, Ali, which I don't quite see Cristiano Ronaldo adapting to. No, because the, the whole statement is about his power to make the decisions. And at some point, that power is taken away from you. It gets to a point in, in your career where simply you're not doing the same things that you did back in your prime. And we're seeing the slow decline of Cristiano Ronaldo. And then there are moments in which he scores a hat trick and like, oh, he's back. Cristiano is back. No, that is an outlier. That is not the direction in which we're going. And he knows this, but he's not willing to accept right. this. And so when that's taken away from him, for him to decide, see the big picture and say, you don't need me anymore. I'm not needed anymore. I'm not the best player anymore. I'm going to take myself out. I don't think he has that in his makeup. He's going to go for as long as he wants to go. And then he will be the one that says, I'm done with you guys. You're not done with me. I'm done with you. And that is the point in which he'll walk away. But that's not happening anytime soon. F Frank, what's interesting that isn't Cristiano Ronaldo, who's unique from this perspective. Almost everyone that I speak to who retired from the game, 
they're almost like the last ones to know when to hang up their boots. Uh, and it's sad because uh, retiring is part of a career. You have to know where to, uh, uh, to stop to, uh, to make sure that you don't show pity to, uh, to the world where before you were showing uh, uh, gratefulness. And, uh, and, uh, and that's what it is. And it's true that most of the time it's mostly your friends, your family saying, you know, you should open your eyes. You know, I see you playing. You were the best. You're not anymore. And... All Ronaldo's fans, calm down. I'm talking about every player in the world, not <laughs> only Cristiano Ronaldo. Because I know I've been insulted by all of them, saying, well, who are you to talk about Cristiano Ronaldo? Yes, of course, he doesn't need Frank Leboeuf to decide whether he's going to stop or not, or Ali Moreno, or anybody else. He's going to decide, and really, I don't give a stuff. I'm just saying that it's part of football, it's part of your career to find the right time to give up your career. Because I remember Platini, because of an injury, giving up, and uh, everybody was really sad. They wanted him to keep on playing, and it's the way you have to stop uh, football. Mm. Because yeah. you have to make sure people are gonna regret you uh, more than saying, well, you better get out, be getting out, because you, uh, you, you're showing me pity. He's, well, he's set the bar so high, Robbo, isn't he? He's, he's already he's mm. got 18 goals already this season. We're talking about it as mm. if he is struggling week in, week out. Well, he's not struggling every week. Uh, some weeks he works harder than other weeks. And that's the problem. When you become an older player, when you start to lose that little bit of fitness and that little bit of energy, you do things to suit yourself and not the team. I've seen it in many, many older players that they then start to look after themselves. They get everybody else to do their jobs. They don't do the running they should do. And Ronaldo, to a certain degree, has done that in the last three years at Juventus and this year at Manchester United. On his day, when he feels fit and feels energetic, he's still a magnificent player. But there's too many games where he hasn't shown those same energy qualities. Where will he be next season, Gab? Still at United? I mean, the difficult thing is he has an enormous contract with Manchester United. Um, you know, he makes something like £35 million a year. That's in excess of $40 million. Um, he's still, if not the highest paid player in the world, then the second highest. It's him and Messi neck to neck. And so it's easy to say uh, if United go to him, oh, go somewhere else, we don't want you anymore, hypothetically, or, or him to say, I'll go somewhere else. Well, for him to do that, I think he would almost certainly have to take uh, a, a, a pay cut, probably a big pay cut. Um, and for United to do that, uh, I don't know, they have to basically pay him to go away uh, at this stage. And at this point, they would look at it and say, you know what? Uh, you're still the most talented guy we have here. You scored 18 goals um, through the end of March. Uh, stick around. We'll build your team around you. I mean, that's a decision that they're going to have to make. Uh, the other option is that he makes some sort of romantic end of career decision and takes a big pay cut and goes back to sporting Lisbon or, or, or whatever. Um, maybe he does something like that. But uh, I, I think he's right in the sense that he holds all the cards because he has that massive contract through 2023. And every time he steps on the pitch, uh, you know, we can talk about declining skills and not playing to your salary. He's probably better and more productive than, you know, all but one or two Manchester United players. Kind of still relevant to that conversation, Gab. We saw reports once again suggesting that Manchester United are going to put in a bid for Harry Kane this summer. Does Ronaldo's presence affect that at all? You know what? I saw this report. And <laughs> I don't know for certain, but I'm just going to speculate here and suggest that 110% this comes from Harry Kane's agent. 100 and oh. uh, Even the fact that they come out and say, like, oh, and you know, they're going to go and, and try to move this forward and get this done uh, before they sign the new manager. I mean, Harry Kane might have had a logic last summer before Cristiano got there, and obviously they do need a center forward. But I, I refuse to think, after all the mistakes that United have made, that the new crew, uh, you know, Arnold, Murta, uh, and Fletcher, would go out and spend so much money on Harry Kane and his wages and whatever, while Cristiano's still there, unsure whether you can shift him, without the thumbs up of their new manager. I mean, that would just be such a beyond demented move. I refuse to believe that United would do something like that. Uh, now, if the new manager comes in and says, oh, yeah, I'd love Harry Kane, I love Cristiano, we find a home for Cristiano, boom, let's do this, fine. But to go ahead and make a move like this, to commit so many resources... 
um, without knowing who your new manager is and how you're going to play would just be beyond silly. But, Robbo, what new manager wouldn't want Harry Kane? Uh, I think most managers would want him. But if, as Gab just said it, if a new manager comes in and wants to play with a front three, with two wide players and a centre forward, then you've got a problem with Ronaldo. Are you going to play him on the left wing or the right wing? Because I tell you what, Juventus tried to do that on many occasions and he never stayed there. He went everywhere but there. So I don't... Gab's absolutely right. Until you've got a new manager, you know what system they're going to play, uh, you can't go and buy Harry Kane unless you're going to play with two up front. And I don't think we know what that, that new manager would do. So, yeah, you can't buy him just yet. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.